Simon, why does the Sibyl condone abortion? Good question, Mercedes. Science says in the Sibyl that abortion can be both good and bad. For example, it is good in those instances where the life of the mother is threatened. But doesn't the baby have a right to live too? No, it doesn't. There are many arguments as to why the baby has a right to live, and all of them are invalid. Why? Because science and the Sibyl say so. Yes, but why do they say so? What's the logic behind it? The answer to your question is high level. Are you sure you want to know? You do know what the consequences are when those of lower levels attempt to learn higher level concepts? Yes. Very well, I will explain. Firstly, a fetus has no intrinsic right to life because it is non-sentient. Tell me, when did you have your first sentient thought? How far back do your memories go? My earliest memories are from when I was about two years old. Imagine that you died before you were two years old. For the sake of argument, let us assume that it was an agonizing and extremely painful death. What then? How would you feel? I don't really know. Seems like a paradox. How can I feel anything if I'm dead? Exactly. If you were dead, would you feel regret? No. Would you feel anger towards those who killed you? No. We kill many non-sentient beings every day without a thought. When you're at the supermarket buying meat, do you wonder about the fate of the animal? Not really. But we are talking about human life. Not an animal. Well science says that humans are no better or worse than any other animal. The theory of evolution supports this. The sacredness of human life is a myth propagated by other false religions. And human beings aren't exactly an endangered species and are far from any danger of going extinct. Good point. It is also a sin in scientism to have a false vested interest. This means claiming that one has a vested interest in something when one actually doesn't. This is the sin that pro-life campaigners commit. They claim that the death of the fetus somehow affects them when in fact it doesn't. In other words, they are making the fetus's life or death their business when it's actually none of their business. HMM. I never thought of it that way. In scientism there is also a concept of embeddedness in the social fabric which is a very high level concept. Everything in nature is embedded in the social fabric to varying degrees. Tearing something out of the social fabric will damage the fabric depending on how deeply embedded it is. With me so far? Yes, I think so. Can you give some examples? For example, let's take two people in a country. One is the leader of the country and the other is a homeless person. The leader is an example of something that's embedded deeply into the social fabric while the homeless person has only a weak attachment to the social fabric. If both died suddenly, the leader's death would leave a huge rip in the social fabric, whereas the homeless person's death would hardly affect the fabric. Okay, makes sense. How is this connected to abortion? The fetus only has a very weak attachment to the fabric, via the parents and other members of the family. It can be terminated, before it has had a chance, to embed itself into the social fabric. HMM. I guess so. Science also says, that all fetuses are equivalent. A fetus need not be valued, because another can easily take its place. In other words, fetuses are replaceable. One fetus is like any other. It is only after a few years, when the fetus has grown into a sentient being with a personality does it differentiate itself from other human beings. HMM. You are right. In some cases abortion is not desirable. For example, science is against the practice of aborting pregnancies based on the gender of the fetus, hair color, skin color and so on. I agree, it is a despicable practice. You see, scientism is more pragmatic than other religions when it comes to difficult issues. Someday I hope to master the foundation knowledge which will enable me to understand better the things you've just said. Good. But realize that there are many things that you will never be proficient in, no matter how hard you try. But that's okay. Just have faith in science, and put your trust in him, and the higher level scientists who he appointed to speak his words. Yes I will. My faith in science and the Sibyl grows every day. Thank you for your insight first scientist Simon. Praise science. Science be with you. And also with you.